So before we get started, we have a special message for you from a friend. Hi, Larry, Sean. It's me, Regis. Hey, take a look at me. I'm one of your followers. Yes, I had my heart operation just like you did. And just like you do, I feel like a million bucks. Thanks so much for telling me about it. It, it was just the best thing I ever did, Larry. And listen, you and I, Larry, can now sing forever the rest of our lives together, Larry. You and me. <laughs> Thanks, much. Aww. So Regis uh, was Regis. so, so nice. excited to do yeah. that for you. I would have wow. appeared with him, but he's too old. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us why you care so deeply about heart health. Well, uh, I guess it'll start with me. I never cared much about it. Uh, I was a lifetime smoker. I was overweight. I never thought about it. And doctors would tell me and I would bypass it. Commercials would appear on television to stop smoking. I never thought it would happen to me. I thought it was indestructible. And then one day in February of 1987, I had a heart attack. Uh, subsequent to that, I needed heart surgery. Uh, the day of the heart attack, I stopped smoking. I really got involved in what the heart was all about. I got you became friends with my doctors. Mm -hmm. I had the heart attack in Washington. I had the surgery in New York. I have three cardiologists, one in Washington, one in New York, one in L.A., I stay on top of things. It's been many years now since all of this took place. And uh, after the surgery, we were sitting around one day, uh, and someone asked me how much it cost. And I didn't know because insurance had paid for it. So I got to thinking about, what about people who aren't insured? Because I think the w one of the worst aspects, one of the worst blights on this nation was that we're the only major major nation in the world without a national health program, which was a disgrace to me. That someone, because someone has money over here, can get a heart attack, can get a heart attack and get attention. Someone over there doesn't. It's, it's crazy to me. So we did, I formed this little foundation to help people, and we started with a little event in Baltimore, and eventually it grew and grew and grew. My wife, when I subsequently married Sean, she became chairperson and now it's grown to where we've helped so many people. We're still helping people. And uh, so I, I got wound up in it and so that the best thing in my life is helping others. And that got, all got involved through this, through the Heart Foundation. But what happened to me? And I thought I should give back. When you talk about heart heroes, what do you mean? Well, I don't know, it may mean different to Sean. To me, a heart hero is people who stand up and be counted, people who help us. They're heroes in that they're helping to save other people's lives. People who come forward, people who help themselves. What do you think? Is well, it? we have heart heroes that we are honoring. We, when anybody does something, the, there was a woman who did a, uh, a, a walk for heart health here in Beverly Hills recently. She's somebody that we want to spotlight and, uh, and, and honor. Uh, uh, Star Jones just wrote an article about heart health, and so we want to honor her and anybody that really uh, does anything to bring awareness to heart health and, and living a, a, a healthier, happier life. My wife's ahead of me in this, so we've <laughs> got heart heroes. I just learned of this, but I'm a very busy person. I can't keep up with everything. Well, I'm happy. He's a I think quick that's, learner. He's that's a, very a great quick idea. Learner. I know. No. What advice would you give to people who are living with heart disease? Well, if they know they have it, uh, uh, you don't have to give them any advice. If you know you have heart disease, you don't smoke, you exercise, you watch what you eat, you stay on top of it. I, I don't know any person who has heart disease who is not involved in it. Uh, you become very aware of pain. Uh, you, you, you should worry. Worry is a constant. Try to avoid stress. Now, that's a contradiction there. Mm -hmm. You should worry about heart disease and avoid stress, which <laughs> You should be aware of heart disease. Well, you should worry, too. If you have a pain, uh, don't dismiss it. Uh, in fact, too many with regard to women's heart disease, which I think is a sad case, many women go to doctors and they have heart pain and the doctors treat it as indigestion. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the numbers, uh, you know, of, of women who die with heart, uh, because of heart disease, are so much greater than the combined, all cancers combined, including breast cancer. Mm -hmm. More women die of heart disease than that every year. And, and that's a number, when people hear it for the first time, 
it's astonishing to them because we hear so much about cancer, 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 breast cancer. You know, just, there's just so much more attention brought to that for whatever reason. Uh, and, and it's great that people are bringing attention to that and right. trying to, to cure that. But we also have this very, very serious situation with heart disease in, in women and in men. And my theory is that uh, the word heart attack, the term heart attack, is a male term. If I told you someone out there just had a heart attack, you would not expect to see a woman on the floor. And because of that, that generates through the whole society. Therefore, doctors are human. So they also would expect to see a man as well. But the more they learned about it, uh, and there are a lot of women now running with the ball. Sean is one of them, Barbara Streisand is another, uh, who are paying attention to women and heart disease, and our foundation is as well. We've helped a lot of women. We have. Mm -hmm. As a family, how have you changed your lifestyle since this experience? Well, my wife decided never to bother me, and... Uh, <laughs> Not to deal with little things and to <laughs> treat me as a hero at all I times. Treat him as the king that he is, and, and uh, promises to worship me. And so bring that him fantasy, in your slippers in the morning. That fantasy is over. And <laughs> anything I say goes. Now that's the proper way to treat a heart patient. <laughs> now, if you use our family's example, let's use the improper way. Okay. Our children will never cause us stress <laughs> because they're fourteen and thirteen, and they're aware that their father has had heart disease and heart surgery, and that women are prone to probably get it. So they're <laughs> kind at all times and very quiet like little mice and treat us with gentleness and understanding. <laughs> and my wife's treatment of me is just, oh, since she got involved with the Heart Foundation, she has become just Florence Nightingale. Is the insurance paid off, honey? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the other day I saw her removing pills. <laughs> But actually, you got married in the hospital, didn't you? Three days oh, before that your was surgery. A, that's one of, that's, that is one of, really a, a great story. I have, it's, a, it's, it's a sad great story. We had a major wedding planned, right? It was going to be beautiful. It was going to be at a friend's house. Vic Damone was going to sing. Nancy Reagan was the host. Billy Graham uh, had flown out already. He was in Los Angeles, not to officiate. But it was, it was a, my wife is a very devout Mormon. And so it was going to be a Mormon officiated, but Billy Graham was attending. And um, Al Pacino was driving on the West Side Highway to go to the airport to get out here. To, it was all very well planned. And the, Ted and Jane. Yeah, Ted, Ted was the best man. Jane was a maiden, maid of honor. And uh, it was all very well. Everything was going to be wonderful. And uh, the day before, on Thursday, we were going to be married on a Friday, uh, I had a little pain. And I went in, and the doctors at UCLA kept me overnight, and now it's the day of the wedding, Friday. And uh, they want to do massive surgery on me again. They wanted to cut him open, not, not yeah. just... They want to go open. through a whole bypass again. My doctors from New York were on the phone with them, didn't agree with that. They flew out the same day they were flying on a plane. I'm in the hospital. They told me, don't do the surgery. Stay there. Wait till we get there. She's dressed in a beautiful violet dress for the wedding. There's friends standing around, some of them in shorts. It was my the weirdest. It was a very... Herbie is standing next to me, my friend Herbie from... Everyone is there. This, this is 5 o'clock in the morning. This no, is... it started at 5. I think the, we got married around 7. But it started at 5. Everyone was there. And 5 o'clock in the morning to her is an hour. She does not up. know. I must have really wanted to yeah. get married. She doesn't get up early. <laughs> and so we decided I'm going to have to stay. We're not going to do the surgery up. And we're going to fly on the medevac plane to New York, where they plan to open it up without surgery. I had a blocked, one blocked artery. And uh, so we got married right there in the hospital bed, uh, flew to New York that night on a medevac plane. I sat up. She lied in the hospital bed on the plane. I, I had a migraine. Heart. She had a migraine. Migraine trumps heart disease on a medevac because migraine hurts worse. Than heart disease. <laughs> so the, heart, the attendants at the airport, when they came up to the plane, thought she was the sick person. <laughs> they had to take me to the hospital. And so, so the marriage was not consumated. <laughs> it, <laughs> I mean, wasn't. I, it wasn't. For like six weeks <laughs> or longer. She went, she went to the hotel room with my friend Herbie. I still don't know what happened. 
<laughs> and uh, I went to New York Nothing. Hospital, and uh, they they opened it. And then subsequently in November, that was September 5th, 1997, in November we had a big party. We, we redid this vows, and uh, Al Pacino read the poem, and Ted Turner was the best man, and then we had a wonderful party at Spago's. It was really a great wedding. I think it was a, had a great band, and everyone had a great time, and she had four former boyfriends there. Nice. <laughs> and one former husband. <laughs> this was to reduce my stress. <laughs> so your foundation curated a couple of magazines on Flipboard, one yes. about heart heroes and one about recipes, and I'd love to show them to you. I can't wait to see. I've been hearing about this, so... So this is Flipboard. Wait, I've got to grab my glasses so I can really see. So this is your heart health magazine. Wow. And what I really love about this is that it takes a very holistic approach to heart health. So it's not just about wow. diet and exercise, but it's also the intangibles, like being kind to someone. Boy, that's really terrific. I, I'm so excited about this. I've been hearing about this. I've not seen this. this. Well, you, we, we've been talking about it. Why have I not it. seen this? Well, because this is... Because I, I didn't know it. about heart heroes either. Well, you did. You just weren't focusing. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> or you forgot. That's really... But no, this is, this is fantastic. What's really great is you can share the whole thing out on your Twitter, and then people can enjoy it in this kind so of So when I Twitter thing. about this, I just have to say... You can tweet and send a link out, and it'll go straight... That's right. Here, right? That's right. That's I'm very, very impressed. You doing a good job, you two. Well... What's next? And this is your magazine about heart healthy recipes. Now this and, I know nothing about. Well, this is this is my favorite part. Not that the other stuff isn't important, but this is this is the fun part. And and uh, she's a great cook. <laughs> so I wanted to ask about that. Um, how has your diet changed since this experience? Well, I, I go off it sometimes. I'm, I'm supposed to eat a lot more fish. I eat a lot. I shouldn't eat meat. You know, it's hard to change. I eat a lot of vegetables. I watch what I eat. I, I've gained 10 pounds in the last 18 months. I'll try to stay at the current weight. I weigh 161. I once weighed 190 when I was smoking. But she's really into this, right? Well, I just think it's important that you're aware of what you're putting into your body. It's a, a real simple thing. What you put in is what you're going to get. If you put something quality in your body, you're going to have a quality uh, result. And if you put junk in your body, you, you're going to feel like junk. How do you set your kids on the right course of healthy eating? And We've done a good job with that lately. They, they, they eat a lot less. Chance, our son, was like 30 pounds overweight. I think 30 pounds. And he goes, to this, he goes to this baseball camp every year. He's leaving tomorrow. IMG, it's a very famous baseball camp. This is his fifth year. Yeah. Fifth year. I, I and think... he lost a lot of trim. He's into exercise and things. And Ken is very strong and able-bodied. But I find that they're eating... Much better under your tutelage. Well, I think it's important. They eat the vegetables. Way, the way you present things to your kids, and and the way you present body image, and because kids can really, especially preteens, which our our kids are now Teen. thirteen and fourteen, now they're teenagers, but it's a it's a it can be a slippery slope because there you can if you focus too much on. Their, their weight, they can go the other way and, and have an eating disorder, which is even worse for your heart, you know. So for our kids, sports is a big motivator. And so if you want to hit that home run, you're going to be ahead of the game if you're putting better fuel in your body than this other kid who's just pulled into some fast food chain somewhere. Our but awareness is getting greater, too. Uh not to drop names, but my friend Bill Clinton mm -hmm. has been a leader. You did in, drop the name. <laughs> okay, I dropped the name. He's been a leader in fighting this. How many names has he dropped in this in, interview so far? Mm, I think you should have a little ding. <laughs> ding. <laughs> Sorry, finish. <laughs> <laughs> my continuing stress reduction plan. <laughs> Bill Clinton has helped a lot with schools, mm -hmm. the emphasis on schools. I salute Mayor Bloomberg on reducing this ridiculous drinks in New York, the soft drinks that people drink out of 80 quart bottles, which is insane. Uh, I think there is a health kick in America. We are an obese nation and the American Medical Association and the American Psychiatric Association has just declared obesity 
as a disease. First time ever. It's very scary. And that's a direct link to heart disease. How can a regular person contribute to heart health and the foundation? Well, they can go How to can lkcf.org, which is our website, one of the best websites around, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell them other way. I think th the best thing they can do to help our foundation is take care of themselves. We want people to to educate themselves. We want to help educate people. We want people to live longer mm -hmm. and, and live healthy and live and live a quality life. But if they do want to donate money and help us, we could use it. Uh, to for them. You, you don't help a better cause than the Larry King Cardiac Foundation. And we've been we've been really really lucky. We actually one one thing we were able to do this last week is we oh, yeah. uh, we put a valve in a young twenty year old boy's heart uh, just a couple blocks over at Cedars. Um, he needed help, and they came to us, and it was so gratifying to be able to to write an email, Larry, which is like something that's new to you, and congratulate him and tell him how happy we were for him. That's great. <laughs> We got we were, we were able to congratulate him. See, to me, I would have liked to have mailed him a letter with a little stamp that he could open and actually see what our handwriting is like. It's a, it's a whole new thing, folks. It's called handwriting. It's called mail. It's very, it's very cheap. It's like 38 cents or something. And you get it the next day. You don't need to be The rushed. next day. You don't need it immediately. And then you open it up, and you seal it, and it's sent to you. Yeah. It's from me to you, not. But I'm so happy we did help and save a life. So That's great. what we do. We save. Family. We save lives. Well, great. Thank you so much, both Thank of you, you for Mia. your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Wonderful yeah. having you in our home. Thank you. How did I do? You did <laughs> great. <laughs>